Hey there, fellow sim racers, Cole Little here. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Are you tired of losing control and careening into the barriers? Or maybe you're just frustrated with your lack of finesse and throttle control. And how about this one? Are you ready to leave that lead foot reputation behind? Well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, then listen up, because the SimMagic PHTS hydraulic throttle system might be just what you need. With its precise control and smooth operation, say goodbye to spinning out and say hello to dominating every corner on the track. This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we're here to do something very specific, so I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible. This review is really for only for P1000 owners or people who are thinking about P1000 pedals, and what we're going to talk about today could influence that choice or decision. We are here to check out the new PHTS, the Hydraulic Throttle System by SimMagic. This is yet another modification or hop up that you can do to the P1000 pedals. That can be the standard or the inverted. This one works on either and it's the same model. You don't have to order the inverted one like we did with the hydraulic uh, brake pedal. And speaking of which, you can see our pedal set here. They are fully modified. We got the hydraulic brake pedal. We've got the pedal reactors. And now we're gonna add that PHTS, which goes for $139. Now, what does it do? It creates a damper system, a hydraulic system on your throttle pedal. Uh, why do I need that? Well, we're going to get to that. I could probably explain that a lot better when we get down to driving. But when you think of conventional pedal sets, the throttle pedal on 99.9% .9 of the pedal sets out there in sim racing uses spring for resistance. And high-end ones, they might give you a light, a medium, and a heavy-duty spring. But essentially, they work on the same principle, which is a spring for resistance, and that's also what's pressing back on your foot. Now with the PHTS, this is a damper hydraulic system, and instead of a spring, well, I think there is a spring to give you some return, but you have a hydraulic system creating damper, slowing down, potentially slowing down the application of the pedal. So I'll tell you how that works out on track when we get there, but before we even get to it, let's just talk about how we do this. This assembly directly one-to-one -one replaces the original throttle assembly, and the installation is really, really easy. All you have to do is release the back end of the original one by removing an Allen bolt and release the standard throttle spring that was there before. You have to remove the cotter pin and then the push pin on the front at the throttle arm, and you can remove the whole spring assembly. Going back in, all you have to do is you install this really cool copper fitting, put the pin back through it, and lock it down with a bolt, and then you take the new throttle assembly, the PHTS, and you connect it back on the throttle arm by inserting the pin and then the cotter pin to hold it in place. And then you just turn the damper to one, which is the lightest setting, making it the easiest to compress. And you squeeze it and it just fits right into place and the bottom of the assembly hooks onto that new copper pin. All in all, it only took a matter of minutes and honestly, anybody could do it. So I think next thing would be to get it mounted onto our rig and then we can talk about how it actually performs on track. Now, when it comes down to driving with the PHTS, we have to really focus on the differences between the standard pedal and the upgrade or the modification that we've made. So we're really focusing all of our mind, all of our attention on the throttle alone, which sometimes can be difficult when driving. And that's obviously gonna be most critical when we're getting on the gas coming off of corners. So real quick, let's real quick, let's just talk about a, a, a standard spring and the thing in the way it matches your foot. So a standard spring is heavily loaded usually and when you compress it, it gives you that resistance until it meets the end. And as you release your foot, it really almost presses on your foot kind of hard, uh, like almost pushing your foot off the throttle pedal and it matches you speed to speed, one to one. As fast as you pull the pedal off, there's no way to out accelerate the spring. With a damper system, that spring is removed. Now inside, I feel there is some kind of a return spring, something pushing back. And it's really the damper, the way it slows down the pedal reaction. So right now I have it on setting six, which is the, the stiffest 
setting. And when I first started driving, I was on setting one and it was almost hard to notice at times. But with setting six, uh, getting used to the new setup, I was able to feel it a lot more. And depending on what you need, I think after you start to feel the difference in the pedal, you could start tailoring that setting down and still get the, the results and the effects that you want. So when I just ease the pedal on real smooth, you're really not gonna notice a huge difference between this and a regular spring. So when you're being a really good smooth driver and you're getting that gas application really nice, it acts just the same. It's not a noticeable difference night and day. You wouldn't even know it at times. Now there are other times when you slam on the gas and if you press really hard, really fast, you immediately feel fight or press back from the pedal. And that's that hydraulic damper slowing the pedal down at its extremes. So again, smooth, I don't feel it so much. Hammer on it and you immediately feel it slow down that pedal. And for those who have trouble getting on the gas too strong and sending the rear end wide or sliding the rear end out of corners, it's going to help slow you down. It's just, it's telling you, it's, it's a warning system for someone like me. So if I'm gonna get on into the corner here nice and then I'm gonna get real aggressive on the gas and it's like, are you sure you want it that strong? Maybe you should back down and ease on and be smoother, save your tires and get a better control and traction of the car. And it is rather remarkable. See right there, you could hear a combination of two things going on. I heard the little hints of traction control, the little warning signs there, I heard it from just a massive oversteer but I heard the early warning signs of traction control, the noise that blah, 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 the car makes. And at the same time, I was being fought by the pedal, telling me to just kind of, hey, ease off, ease off. You're really too aggressive getting off this corner. Be smoother, protect your tires. And it, it was great how the two worked hand in hand just like that. I could see another scenario where it'd be really beneficial, and it's probably not even the intended driver, but it would be for oval racers. When I'm on a really tough track where tire wear coming off the corner is critical and maybe a car starts to get looser and looser as later into the runs, it's gonna prevent me from getting too aggressive on the gas pedal coming off of those corners. And again, if you don't want it to fight you too much, like right now it's setting six, if I get on the gas, immediate press back. If I take it down to three, it's about half as much. And you take it down to one and you don't get a whole lot of resistance, just a little bit of a signal and warning. But again, it was hard for me to detect that until I really realized when it was benefiting. And that was on that quick, quick press into the pedal. Now there's one thing also that I think is a little different than a standard spring. And I could be wrong about this. This could be just placebo effect. But I do feel like it takes a little less pressure to hold. Like right now I have it on setting six, so that would be like the equivalent of a heavy spring. But if I wanna just hold it half throttle, I don't feel nearly as much push back on my foot. Yes, there's a return spring. So there is a little press out of the pedal, but I don't feel it. I can hold it right there at that half throttle using what feels like less force out of my leg or my foot than on a standard spring. And that is another added benefit that I, I'm pretty sure it's going on, but I'm just sure, not sure, is it a placebo effect? Is this just something I think is happening, but it is in fact not different, but I swear I think it's going on. Now that's the way it works. And that's when and how it's gonna benefit you on track. And I think you probably couldn't judge yourself as a driver. Are you smooth on the throttle? If you're super duper th smooth on the throttle coming off of corners, then this is probably not something that you need. But I'll tell you, I'm known for being a thunderfoot. I'm known for pressing way too hard on the gas pedal coming off the corners. And I know that that causes excessive tire wear excessive heat which makes my tires even more slippery so the next time i do it it's going to happen again 
So in the end, I really do like it. And, and I think it's the kind of thing, again, you, you know your personality as your driver and whether it would be a benefit for you or not. For me, I'll tell you what, it's staying on this pedal set. Yeah, I got them heavily modified, but I am enjoying the performance of it. And uh, I, I, I'm even a little surprised, to be honest with you. I, I, I really am. I didn't think I'd see the benefit. Now, looking to the other stuff beyond the way it works and what it does, strength-wise, uh, there's, there's no wiggle. <laughs> there's no weird click or feeling it's very very smooth on application very smooth from start to finish same thing on release it releases really smooth no additional noise or side to side play so it does feel really solid built and absolutely perfectly built to go with these p1000 pedals obviously going into this review i'm going to admit i had a lot of doubt i wasn't sure if this was something that i really even needed or wanted even on my pedal set or was willing to pay 139 dollars for the end results so that is the way i went into this and the reason is just like i stated at the beginning maybe you don't feel like you have a problem with your throttle pedal and for some reason i think mainly my ego was telling me that i don't have a problem with my throttle pedal and in reality, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Uh, I am a heavy throttle pedal guy. And when I drive even GT3 cars, I'll see the light flashing for traction control. And in a lot of cars, I've gotten really good at, at driving hard on the gas out of corners and burning up my tires. And sure, I get off the corners well, and I don't even loop it all that often, but sometimes I even do as a result of a heavy throttle pedal. So. If you dial this thing up to six, when you go and press on that thing really hard, it fights back a little bit. When you just press lightly, it goes in rather smoothly. So it really is made specifically for the kind of people who just slam the throttle down and get the wrong results consistently. So I, I think it really can cure or help certain people actually be faster and get more out of their pedals. Now with that said, at $139, am I telling everyone to run out and buy one? No. I mean, obviously, we're talking to P1000 owners or potential P1000 owners specifically. But but would I say run out and buy this? And it's like, no, no, I don't think I would. I mean, again, there's a reason that 99% of the pedals on the market have just conventional spring because it does work and it is very inexpensive and it really can't go wrong it just works forever for a lifetime springs i've never had a spring on a throttle pedal on a modern set of pedals break uh with this uh it is it is adding expense it's it's adding potential uh failure despite sim magic saying that this goes through millions of cycles and i'm sure it does but you know someone out there is going to get an unlucky one and it, it is adding to the equation now with that said we're sim racers. We love, we love spending money on our rigs. We love having the best of the best. We love making modifications to all of our stuff. And for that, it's it's a no-brainer for those. So, I mean, I think that's the two main candidates or people who are going to really benefit from this. Those who just want to have every bell and whistle they can possibly have, cool. You're going to have something not a lot of people have on their rigs. And then the other is for those people who are just super thunder thunderfoot and just can't back down when it comes to easing on the throttle nicely so it's going to actually benefit those drivers specifically so i hope that tells you everything that you need to know it's kind of cool doing a modification a little different than just your everyday review because it's again very very specific to a very specific group and specific needs uh, a, a particular driver so that was kind of fun and it did give me a little bit of education on what i've been doing wrong with or without this as a cure to that so i hope you've enjoyed this review if you have please give it a thumbs up be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out when our next video comes out and thank you for watching this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track